Hey, it was Danny, and today we're going to be taking a look at another G-Shock. This is a bit of the heavy dogs in the G-Shock collection, but we all know how it goes. Now, as we already know, the standard feature is going to be an alarm. It's going to be a um, stopwatch. This has a global calendar. I think it's atomic time. Um, world time, not atomic time. World time. And it can, what else? I'm not reading nothing. things off the dome. Um... What can I do? I'm thinking. Some other stuff, man. The standard G Shock moves they get with this. 30 meter deep dive. I think you can go deeper with this. It also comes with a sensor for like altitude. But anyway, we're going to get right into it. At the end of the day, we know why we buy these watches. It ain't because they do all these fancy features. It's because, man, they just look good. So this model is going to be the G, the GA 1100-1A-1AOS. I think this is the older print. This is the older um, manufacturing one, like because the newer ones don't have that. 1A, 1OS, so, but they look the same. With that said, we gonna get right into it. We're looking at a relatively beautiful watch, two-tone um, straps, metal, stainless steel, clasp buckle thingy. One of these, this is the only thing that, this is the only thing with G-Shock that I can't get past is when they have this one little piece for this long strap but it's like I said two-tone strap you get that nice um, symmetrical logo on the back that's also where the model number is All right you get that um it's like a plastic dome or not the bezel the bezel is made of like steel and plastic and the glass is, I think they use plastic for it. So, so there's that. There's that sensor I was talking about right here on the left with the standard four buttons, one of which are the, it's the light right here. This is the only thing I don't like. I like when G-Shock normally has the light. At the bottom, you have these lugs that are kind of built into the watch versus coming down out and it's a screw back like meaning the screws to keep this back secure to the watch and that's it that that's basically the gist of the watch you know but what I want to share with you other than the technical specs you know about what standard nine inch length of the watch I have a eight inch wrist so it's like nine probably like nine and a half Probably like nine and a half, and I have like probably like a seven and a half wrist. So that's the watch on the wrist. That's why I was talking about when it don't have that clasp because if you leave it out here too long or too close to the edge, when you move your hand, that comes off, and then you have it like pop out, and then it's like catching your clothes. But it has a double buckle, the double loophole thingy to keep it really nice and secured on the wrist like it ain't going nowhere really comfortable and you get that little bit of a hint of that gray that gray on the inside when you moving about you know if people care if anyone knows what they're looking at and the buttons are pretty big moreover what is the most attractive feature about the watch has to be the face all of the details that they put into the face right now as you see it you know you have this right here this little I think that's the like features you have it the world it has like the world time has a stopwatch it has the alarm and comp I know I forget what that means again but I think that's when they start using this sensor to tell you altitude and everything like that 
that also function as a button. So when you press it, come on, give me, with me. It does a little fancy move, and then it starts doing whatever that is. And as you're moving, it's changing. Right? Ain't that dope? Ain't that dope? And then you just press mode and then it goes back to time. Um, and that's, that arrow, the second hand that, as it moves, it's going along with the numbers at the edge of the cam, at the edge of the cam, at the edge of the watch, like right here and stuff, at the bottom on the bezel itself. Other than that, I mean, you know, you get the hour hand all the way to the left. At the bottom, that's where that, all the features were. And when you press it, it goes to that comp. You press mode. It returns back to time. You can tell by the little arrow that's on the bottom. And then, so yeah, the comp, time. This is the stopwatch. Wait, no. This is the world time. Stopwatch. Um, timer. And the alarm. If you have any set, that's how you do it. And it goes back to time. Really easy. Really big numbers. Well, the only numbers you're going to see is the 12. Everything else has a little dash. And again, I was saying on the hand right here to the left, that's where you get the time. I mean, all these features I'm never going to use, I'll be honest with you. But I mean, it's just a brolic watch. It's just a beast to have to the collection. Just a beast to have to the collection. You can't go wrong. To get this watch, I'm probably gonna spend about 125, 125, excuse me, to maybe two something. Depends on where you get it. I got it on sale. And I am, I'm happy with the purchase, right? And that's it. That's it. Oh, by the way, this, everything else is plastic other than the face of the bezel, which probably a little bit of stainless steel as it goes into, as it goes into the rest of the frame. It's plastic, steel, plastic, steel, plastic, steel, the glass. Plastic, plastic, plastic. The buttons are plastic. Stainless steel back. Plastic, plastic, and a stainless steel strap thingy. Other than that, this watch is good to go. There ain't nothing else about this that's going to be too special. So, that is the, what's that, the GA11 Hundo 1A10S. And they're shock resistant, so it's not limited edition, but it's just a hard watch to come by. Anyway, with that said, if you like what you saw, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Alright? One.